Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we are going to teach you how to get going with bones using SAS and Compass, and we're going to be using SAS and Compass to compile the SAS files that they have here. And we're going to do a little bit of explaining about how the, the styles are set up in Bones. Because, like I said, uh, Bones doesn't assume a ton for you, but it does assume a lot more than some themes, right? Like with underscores, it didn't even assume that we were going to use SAS. So what we could do is build out our own, uh, you know, structure and everything we can bring in if we want to use breakpoints or Suzy 2 or things like that and you can do that with bones but it's going to take a little bit more tweaking because they have some things set up already for you that you're going to either have to take out or or work around in some way now that could be a negative and that could push you to underscores or you could see it as hey they already had some things like breakpoints set up for me. I'm just going to use what they have and uh, we can all be good here. You know, it's it's really just, you know, maybe you see it as it's saving you time and it's really just your own personal preference. So to go through, I want to give a basic introduction to what's going on here in our our site files. Now I have Bones open up here in Sublime Text and we can take a look at the folder structure. Now obviously because this is a starter theme it's meant to change the name to whatever your theme is actually going to be. Um, you'd want to change that in the folder and in the style.css. Um, but what we see here is things that you should be rather familiar with we have basically our header, our index, our search, our, our all of these partials that you've seen in many other themes, right? Uh, we also have this custom type, this custom template. And we're going to go into more of this stuff soon. And this video is going to be mostly about uh, the styles, though. Now, we're used to the style.css file. This is where we would give our theme name and all of this meta information up here. But if we scroll down, we don't see really anything. Now it says do not edit these. These are useless, right? But they need to be here. So uh, that's okay. Uh, feel free to actually read this entire page because it's actually really interesting. I'm not going to go over all of this. Uh, it tells you a little bit about SAS and a little bit about how their CSS is laid out and organized. Um, gives you some uh, recommended reading and things like that. And it gives basically an outline of basically how to use bones here. So please feel free to read that over and, you know, check it out. Uh, but you'll notice there's not any real styles coming into here. Well, that's okay because all of the styles are being done through our SAS files and not the CSS file. If we come up here, we see library and in library, we have a CSS folder, images, JS, SCSS, our translations folder. Uh, we have bones.php. This is all extra bones stuff. So how do we use the SAS? Well, if we open up the CSS folder, you'll see we have these four CSS files. These are all of the CSS files that get compiled from our SAS files. If we come back here, uh, we have our SCSS folder, and inside of here, we have other folders. We have a breakpoints folder, modules, partials, admin.scss, config.rb. We have uh, ie.scss, login.scss, style.scss. Now, these files are what makes up our SAS. Um, in the breakpoints, we basically have these uh, these files that are going to be run at whatever size they say. So at 1030 and up, these are the styles that are going to get used. At 1240 and up, these are the styles that are going to get used. Uh, at This is for retina. This is 480 and 481 and up. This is 768 and up. And this is our base.scss. So basically anything that is going to span all of your device sizes, like a background color or something. If your background color is not changing 
throughout your entire site, uh, whether it's mobile or, or desktop, then you'd put it in base. However, uh, if you know the width of something was changing from 481 to 6, uh, 768, then you'd put that change in the 768. In fact, it even gives you some un... Uh, you know some some elements here with nothing in it now you could like this you could not like this there's a lot of CSS here I personally like to start with a bit more of a blank slate than this however uh, it does take care of a lot of things for you rather nicely now in our modules we have uh, basically different modules of your code so different like types of your code, right? So we have alerts. These are all of the styles relating to alerts. All of the styles relating to buttons are gonna be in buttons. All of the styles relating to forms are gonna be within forms. Uh, like I said, in this styles.scss, you can read a bit more about their strategy for this. Um, if you're not used to having your CSS split up into a whole bunch of SAS files, it might be confusing, but personally, I love it. It really keeps things organized. You can always find what you're looking for quickly. And basically, if you're working on a you know a large project with multiple people working on it, things like that, uh, it just makes it less confusing than one giant 2000 uh, line CSS file or something. Okay, the next we have is partials. And inside of here, we have some like reusable stuff and just some extra stuff. Uh, we have a functions file, which is going to be SAS functions. Um, you can see this is a white function. Read about what these are actually doing. They just have a, a couple of functions, but you would write your own SAS functions in here um, to keep them by themselves. Likewise, we have uh, our grid stuff. So what this is doing is it's basically uh, writing some grid classes for us that we can use in our CSS or that are already being used. Now we also have a mixins file and this is where you're gonna put your SAS mixins. Uh, if you are not familiar with SAS, like I said, watch the SAS videos first and get a handle on what things like mixins and functions are. And normalize.css or SCSS is the, uh, the basic normalize.css that you're used to. Print is going to be your print styles. Typography is going to be for your fonts, your paragraphs, your headings, that sort of stuff. And variables are going to be your SAS variables. We can see we have some colors defined already. Now, uh, if you're not used to these partials, you'll notice that every single one of these files is prefixed with an underscore. What that means is that they're going to be imported and then compiled into another style sheet. So style.scss right here, you'll notice doesn't contain a whole lot except for importing partials. So we see import partials, normalize, and it's importing this partials, variables, partials, typography, partials, functions. So what this does is it basically brings all of this stuff in in this particular order. You'll notice that our breakpoints are inside of media queries. Um, it brings in all of these things and then spits out this style.css file that contains all of your styles. So the things I personally really like about this is it has this SAS structure defined and built for you. The things I don't necessarily like are how much boilerplate code it comes with. I could do with less boilerplate styles and just the general structure and that might make me a little happier. Uh, but if, if you're not used to writing all the CSS from scratch, then perhaps you might like this better and it's to each his own, right? So let's get going and let's actually use this uh, theme, right? Because if we just modify one of these SCSS files, nothing's gonna happen. So I'm most comfortable with terminal. If you have another method, method of compiling your SAS with like CodeKit or something like that, uh, I know there's a Windows alternative. Please use that and check it out. Any way that you can use this to compile your compass works because uh, Bones comes with a config.rb file which already has the paths of everything and you don't need to touch it. 
Now, what we're not going to do in this video is install SAS and Compass. However, we need both SAS and Compass installed to get this working. So while you're doing this, take the time, if you don't have those installed, to watch the how to install SAS video and the how to install Compass video on Level Up Tuts. They're brief, they're really quick, and you can get going. And then we're going to get started compiling our CSS or our SAS code. So let's come into our terminal. I'm going to change directories into uh, my site, which is in sites, level up, um, WordPress. Now that I'm in my site, I'm gonna change directory into WP content themes. And then the theme that we're using is bones because we didn't change the name. Now uh, you'll notice in here that our SAS and stuff and our config RB is located within the SCSS folder within library. So let's change directory into library SCSS. Now, if I type ls, I can see that we are in the directory with our config.rb file and our style.css. So now from here, all I have to type is compass watch. Now, the reason we're using compass is because compass uses this config.rb file. Um, so check out the compass videos as well if you need to install and get compass set up. But basically this config RB file is going to tell SAS and compass what to do. So we're saying compass watch, enter. And now compass is watching for changes. So now if I come to our style, actually let's change uh, something in our base. So in breakpoints, I'm gonna to go to base SCSS and we're gonna change this background and let's pick a variable. I'm gonna pick bones pink because it's going to be obnoxious and we're gonna be able to easily tell that it's different. Okay, so now I'm saying body, be bones pink. I've saved this, checked my term, it's saying it's, uh, it's overwritten the style.css. And now I refresh and the background of our body is now this pink color. So that's good. Compass is now watching for changes. We're able to make edits to our CSS and we understand the directory structure of these files. So you are now ready to get theming and CSSing your site using Bones. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the video, hit us up at Facebook or Twitter, or on the Level Up Tuts forum, pretty much anywhere. We love to hear from you. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.